Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have Azerbaijan. Their CPI score is 23. Now, when we look at Azerbaijan, it's situated between Eastern Europe and Western Asia. And it's a country that boasts a plethora of modern and ancient marvels, really. Baku, its capital city, is filled with a blend of futuristic and historical edifices. However, despite its allure, Azerbaijan's business compliance risks and political corruption hinder foreign direct investments and tourism. Like when we take a look at the oil sector corruption in Azerbaijan, it's primarily attributed to patronage. And although there exists an anti-corruption mandate in the country, well, the frail judiciary empowers corrupt officials and police to act with impunity, resulting in the prevalent practices such as extortion and bribery. The country at number nine is Sudan. Its CPI score is 22. Sudan is definitely a captivating nation, brimming with tourist attractions, boasting more pyramids, as a matter of fact, than Egypt. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Very surprising. Either way, it was once Africa's largest country and is rich in mineral deposits such as gold, iron ore, and other base metals. Unfortunately though, despite its wealth, many Sudanese communities have yet to reap the benefits. The prevalence of cronyism and patronage has resulted in government officials having direct or indirect ownership stakes in numerous companies thereby compromising the economy. On top of that, a lack of transparency has exasperated the frequency of civil servants demanding bribes from both citizens and private enterprises in exchange for services they are legally entitled to. Eritrea comes next at number eight. Its CPI score is 22. Located in the Horn of Africa, this small country has one of the most militarized populations on the continent with over 20% serving in the armed forces. This has led to an inflated military workforce, putting pressure on the national budget. Eritrea is plagued by pervasive corruption with patronage and cronyism being the most prevalent forms of corruption. And citizens seeking civil or judicial services have often been asked for a bribe or gift in return. Also, high-ranking military officials and generals exert significant control over the population, contributing to the widespread corruption and illegal activities in the country. And then in addition to that, police officers have been accused of abusing their positions as civil servants, frequently facilitating the release of their friends and family from prison as a gift. And the same practice is also carried out for private citizens who can afford it. Moving on to number seven, Guinea-Bissau. Their CPI score is 21. Guinea-Bissau, also one of the smaller African nations, is unfortunately ranked among the most corrupt countries on the continent. Despite its lush national parks and diverse wildlife, this West African nation is plagued by rampant corruption within its security forces. The country's judicial system has been severely impacted by government mismanagement and lack of accountability, making it difficult to investigate and prosecute criminal activities. Also, corruption in Guinea-Bissau is not limited to the upper echelons of government. Many citizens have reported being asked to pay a bribe by public officials at least once. The nation at the number six spot is the Republic of Congo. It has a CPI score of 21. Congo Brazzaville, also known as the Republic of Congo, should not be confused with DRC. It's a different nation. This Central African country is home to the world's second largest rainforest and the renowned Pygmy tribe. Additionally, Congo has a wealth of mineral resources, including copper and cobalt, and Congo's diverse flora and fauna make it an attractive tourist destination. However, corruption is a significant obstacle to the growth of the tourism industry. The president's strong grip on power has made the state vulnerable to patronage and a compromised traditional system. 
Coming in at the number five spot with a CPI score of 20, we have DRC. The Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, boasts abundant mineral resources, including gold, diamonds, cobalt, tin, copper, and coal tin. However, the DRC remains among five poorest countries globally. Corruption is widespread in the DRC and affects all levels of government and economic sectors. Clientelism, patronage, and rent-seeking practices have undermined fair competition and made the country unappealing to a lot of foreign investors. From there, moving into number four, we have Turkmenistan. It has a CPI score of 19. Turkmenistan is a landlocked country in Central Asia, and it's renowned for its historical archaeological sites, such as Nisa and Merv, which serve as significant stops along the ancient Silk Road. And as such, the country definitely has tremendous tourism potential. Nevertheless, though, corruption in government as well as the allocation of licenses have been pervasive in Turkmenistan for an extended period. The president's family members and close associates occupy high-ranking positions in politics, education, and trade. The country that comes in at number three is Nicaragua. Its CPI score is 19. Nicaragua is a Central American country famous for its stunning lakes and volcanoes, and it's often overlooked a lot by tourists. However, the country has come under scrutiny for allegations of political repression and a lack of transparency regarding the state budget. Corruption in Nicaragua is pervasive with political power monopolized by President Daniel Ortega and his wife, Vice President. President Rosario Murillo. This type of cronyism and nepotism have severe consequences on the electoral system and the protection of human rights. Coming down to the number two spot, this country is Comoros, with a CPI score also of 19. Comoros is an archipelago in the Mozambique Channel, and it offers stunning beaches, lush cliffs, and quaint colonial coastal towns. Yet, it's often overlooked a lot of times by tourists. The country's lack of infrastructure and weak governance systems have contributed to the growing issue of corruption in Comoros. From judiciary to civil servants and security forces, corruption is rampant in the country. Citizens often have to pay bribes to evade regulations, obtain fake police reports, and avoid arrests. Ending this episode off at number one, we have Chad. This country's CPI score is 19. Chad is a landlocked African country rich in oil, gold, and uranium. The country has been alleged to have high levels of corruption from the quasi-independent judicial system, which is often influenced by government officials to punitive police behavior. Corruption in Chad has been normalized though, and it is often expected for locals and tourists to pay bribes to police and other state forces when crossing checkpoints. All this has led to Chad being one of the poorest countries in the world, although an oil pipeline from Chad to neighboring Cameroon generates billions of dollars every single year. We start off with number 10, Kai Tak Airport in Hong Kong. This particular airport located in Hong Kong was known for its thrilling and nerve-wracking landings. The surrounding area was dominated by mountains, creating a challenging environment for pilots. As incoming flights approach, it almost seemed as if they were skimming the tops of buildings and flying right above the roads. Literally, like precision was required for these landings. But yeah, it definitely was an incredible sight. Pilots had to manually handle the landing due to the unfavorable wind patterns also in the area. Although it is no longer in operation, the memories of those hair-raising flights will always be a part of aviation history. From there, we move on to number nine, Agati Aerodrome Airport in India. 
This place is home to a small airport that serves the area's aerospace needs. At first glance, it's hard to imagine anything remotely terrifying in this seaside haven. However, there's a challenge that pilots face when landing at this airport. The runway on Agati Island is quite short, measuring approximately 1,219 meters in length. And it doesn't leave much room for an aircraft to touch down smoothly and come to a quick stop. It's like Trying to fit a big puzzle piece into a smaller tight fit space requiring precise maneuvering skills and piloting expertise yeah that is just whew, mind blowing to imagine from there let's move on to cleveland hopkins airport in the united states while this airport may not face any peculiar challenging terrain or weather it has unfortunately gained a reputation for being unsafe for the average traveler. Its track record of safety violations speaks volumes. As a matter of fact, back in 2015, the airport received a huge fine of $735,000 for neglecting safety procedures during snowy conditions. Additionally, there have been various instances of hazardous runway conditions over the years. And these incidents highlight the importance of adhering to proper safety protocols and maintaining optimal runway conditions for the well-being of the passengers. Coming in at the number seven spot, we have the Telluride Regional Airport in the United States. This airport is located amidst breathtaking cliffs at a high elevation, making it quite an exciting adventure. As you descend, you'll be treated to an awe-inspiring view of the majestic San Juan Mountains. However, you gotta really hold tight because the strong and turbulent winds in this area can make landing a bit bumpy. It adds an extra element of excitement and challenges both to pilots and passengers. So while you definitely are going to be marveling at the stunning surroundings, you got to brace yourself for a thrilling ride through the wind as you touch down at this airport. Moving on to number six spot, we have the Tiumen Island Airport in Malaysia. If you're seeking an extra exciting vacation, there's a tropical Malaysian destination you should check out. It's an island formed by a volcano and it boasts beautiful beaches where you can have a really good time. Now the serene environment gives off a carefree vibe but the flight to this paradise is a little bit unique. So how it goes is like this. Pilots who fly to this island have to navigate through the surrounding mountains and make a sharp 90 degree turn to stay on track and safely land on the runway. It definitely adds a touch of adventure to the journey, albeit very dangerous if not done precisely. The airport coming in at the number five spot is Courchevel Airport over in France. Imagine an airport nestled in the heart of the French Alps, right in the famous ski resort of Coutrevel. It's actually part of the biggest snowy ski area in the entire world. But here's the catch. Landing at this airport can be quite tricky for pilots. One of the main challenges they face is poor visibility, making it hard to even see clearly when coming in to land. On top of that, the runway itself is quite short, giving the pilots a limited distance to safely touch down their planes. It is a real test of their skills and adds an extra element of excitement to the whole flying experience though. From there we move on to number four. We have the Don Mueang Airport in Thailand. Don Mueang International Airport is one of the oldest airports around and it mostly functions like any other busy airport for commercial flights. But here's the thing that's very unusual about it there's actually a golf course right in between the two runways. So just imagine playing golf while planes are taking off and landing pretty much right next to you. Well, not that close, but a little bit off in the distance, but still. It can definitely be a very exciting and risky experience for golfers. And another issue that this airport does face is flooding. Back in 2011, heavy floods caused water to overflow onto the runways, making it impossible for domestic flights to operate smoothly. The rising waters created obstacles for planes trying to take off and land safely. 
Coming down to the number three spot, we have Shimla Airport in India. If you ever find yourself in Jubarhati Shimla, you might come across a pretty nerve wracking site. It's a place where commercial airplanes gather, but for real, like the runway will give you goosebumps just by looking at it. So just imagine this, picture a runway that's squeezed between two gigantic mountains. And not only that, it's a steep slope as well. So if a plane doesn't land perfectly, it could end up crashing into the rocky peaks around it. Next up, we have Congonhas Sao Paulo Airport over in Brazil. This is the airport at number two spot. Out of the four major commercial airports in Sao Paulo, Congonhas Sao Paulo Airport stands out as one of the most challenging landing spots for pilots in all of South America. The airport's close proximity to the city, combined with a short runway and slippery ground conditions, make it quite tricky to navigate safely. Unfortunately, the airport has a history of accidents. Like back in 2007, a plane carrying over 180 people crashed during landing. Now the pilot overshot the runway and the plane skidded over the slippery surface, crashing into a nearby garage. And tragically, the collision caused a fire to break out, resulting in the loss of many lives. And the fact that the runway was situated near a gas station further added to the severity of this crash. Coming down to the number one spot in this episode, we have Damascus International Airport located in Syria. The airport has a big problem that makes it very dangerous. And it's not just because of the weather or the environment around it. The ongoing political troubles like the Syrian civil war make it a possible target for extremists. In 2022, the Damascus International Airport had to actually close down because it was hit by a missile from Israel. This attack caused a lot of damage to the airport's main runway and also affected the second terminal. The terminal had to be fixed up before it could be used again. And that's why it is number one in this episode. Number 10 brings us to Zojila Pass in India. Linking Ladakh and Kashmir, this Himalayan highway located in India stretches over a distance of nine kilometers, winding along a mountainside that sits at an elevation approximately 3,528 meters above sea level. The rugged dirt road lacks any railings or protective barriers, leaving no buffer to prevent vehicles from plummeting down. The Zojila Pass beset by rainfall, strong winds, heavy snowfall and frequent landslides typically remains closed during the winter months. Now, the challenging rocky terrain mandates that only off-road vehicles are capable of traveling this path. Coming in at the number nine spot, we have Skipper's Canyon Road over in New Zealand. Skipper's Canyon Road, an unpaved and railing-free highway stretching over 26.5 kilometers, bears a legacy of its construction nearly 140 years ago. Resourceful miners of that time harnessed hand drills and gunpowder to carve the road into the mountainside. Presently, Skipper's Canyon Road has become a renowned tourist destination due to its captivating vistas. However, it does remain an inherently perilous route. In fact, the road is deemed so hazardous that vehicle insurance providers refuse to cover any claims arising from accidents on this road. Moving on to the road at number eight, we have the Siberian road to Yakutsk in Russia. Stretching approximately 1,132 kilometers through Siberia to the Russian city of Yakutsk, this remote and icy road stands as one of the most frigid driving routes. It is among the few places worldwide besides Antarctica where the lowest recorded temperatures in history have been documented. While traveling on the Siberian road in winter presents, of course, significant challenges, but the arrival of summer introduces a whole new obstacle. So what happens is as the snow melts, the road transforms into a mud trap, which can ensnare passing vehicles. Despite the dangers though, this route remains frequently traveled, unfortunately claiming numerous victims every single year due to heavy snowstorms, reduced visibility, and of course the mud that comes with the changing seasons. 
North youngest road in Bolivia comes in at the number seven spot. Dubbed the road of death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this 80 kilometer highway links Coroico and La Paz. Characterized by its awe-inspiring twists and turns, this remarkably narrow road spans a mere 3.5 meters and lacks protective barriers, exposing vehicles to the drop of nearly 4,600 meters down into the Amazon Valley. The North Yungas Road, shrouded in fog, rain, and dust clouds, severely hampers visibility, reducing it to near zero along the entire stretch. Mudslides are also frequent, and over the years, the North Yungas Road has tragically claimed the lives of approximately 200 to 300 individuals annually. However, thanks to the implementation of guardrails, road paving, and widening certain sections of the road, these numbers have declined in recent times. From there, let's travel to India. In number six spot, we have the Kilar to Pangji Road. Extending over a vast distance of 114 kilometers across India's Kishtwar Mountains, this road has witnessed numerous reported losses of life alongside countless others that have remained unrecorded. With cliffs plunging more than 2,500 meters and lacking any railings or protective barriers along its edges, it's easy to see why this road is among the most dangerous in the world. Adding to the hazards, the road's structural integrity has greatly deteriorated over time as it was constructed by villagers centuries ago and has received no maintenance or repairs since. The route remains unpaved, allowing for the passage of only one single vehicle at a time. And due to the prevalence of mudslides during winter, the road is exclusively accessible during the summer months. Coming in at the number five, we have Karakoram Highway in Pakistan and China. Linking Pakistan's Punjab province with China's Xinjiang region, the Karakoram Highway holds the distinction of being the world's highest paved road, positioned approximately 4,714 meters above sea level. Spanning a distance of over 1,300 kilometers, this road is plagued by frequent landslides, rock falls, as well as avalanches and also flooding. In addition to these natural hazards, reckless driving and the presence of herds of animals crossing the road have also been attributed to fatal accidents. Compounding the challenges, the absence of barriers along the road's edges expose drivers to greater risk. Guliang Tunnel Road in China comes next at number four. Referred to as the Road of No Mistakes, this 1.2 kilometer pathway boasts both scenic beauty and secrecy, tucked away as one of China's hidden gems. Etched into a sheer cliff in the Taihang Mountains, this road came into existence between 1972 and 1977 through collaborative efforts of local villagers who use huge amounts of explosives. The mere 5.4 meter height and 3.5 meter width, the tunnel accommodates the passage of only two vehicles and that's done with great difficulty. Hazards such as mudslides, rock falls, dense fog, and slippery surfaces further contribute to the risk associated with this roadway. Moving on to number three, we have Fairy Meadows Road in Pakistan. The journey along Fairy Meadows Road in Gilgit Baltistan region is undoubtedly one of the most nerve wracking experiences. Like many dangerous roads worldwide, this 16.2 kilometer highway lacks guardrails or protective barriers. The path itself is unpaved and neglected, adding to the challenging conditions. And to make matters worse, the road's width is limited to that of a Jeep Wrangler, and it gradually narrows to such an extent that at the end, one must continue on foot or by bicycle. Within a short distance, the road swiftly ascends an elevation of 2.4 kilometers, requiring you to drive over numerous steep sections without 
adequate tire traction. <laughs> Coming down to the number two spot, we go all the way to Alaska in the United States, the Dalton Highway. Stretching across an immense distance of 666 kilometers, the Dalton Highway, also known as the Dalton Pass, is perhaps the most dangerous road in the United States. This icy road is frequently used by truck drivers traveling to or from the Prudhoe Bay oil fields. And while portions of the road are paved, it remains susceptible to limited visibility as well as icy conditions. Dangers of the Dalton Highway extend beyond its icy surface though. Harsh and frigid winds, as well as the looming threat of avalanches, add to the dangers of this route. On top of that, the road is relatively isolated with three towns scattered along its extensive 666 kilometer expanse. So it's definitely essential to come prepared with ample supplies as medical facilities, gas stations, and dining food restaurants are scarce and widely dispersed along the way. Coming down to the number one spot, the Baybird D915 is found in Turkey. The Baybird D915 is a 179 kilometer long highway that presents one of the most demanding routes globally. Features 29 sharp bends and lacks protective barriers or railings, leaving vehicles in danger of falling off the edge. Now, navigating this twisty turny road safely solely relies on your driving expertise. You gotta be a good driver. The hazardous nature of the Baybird D915 is evident by its closure during the winter as risks of avalanche, snowstorms, and other hazardous weather conditions increases. Nevertheless, despite being aware of the dangers associated with this highway, numerous local residents continue to travel along the Baybird D915 on a daily basis, employing nearly every available mode of transportation. Number 10 leads us to Sandy Beach. This is located in Hawaii, and it holds reputation among locals as Broke Neck Beach. Now, this term stems from the shore break waves that relentlessly crash on its shores, inflicting numerous injuries on visitors and locals. Sandy Beach is blessed with a near constant ocean swell, and this is courtesy of the prevailing northeast trade winds. These short period waves unleash their power on the steep sandy shorelines, forming hollow tubes that attract adventurous souls seeking the thrill of body surfing and body boarding. However, the sheer force of the breakers propels surfers into the shallow sandbar. So even seasoned body surfers can find themselves at the mercy of these powerful waves, leading to a substantial number of injuries. To ensure the safety of those who venture into the waters, Sandy Beach boasts a team of highly trained and experienced lifeguards. Moving on to number nine, we have Second Beach. Located on the Transkei coast of South Africa, Second Beach at Port St. John's is typically regarded as a delightful holiday destination. However, this beach has gained a notorious reputation as the most dangerous in South Africa when it comes to shark encounters. Surfers and swimmers just aren't safe. The presence of bull sharks at Second Beach has contributed to its status as one of the most treacherous beaches for shark activity. Local authorities and beach officials work diligently to inform the public about the risks and implement safety measures to minimize the potential for shark encounters. Not One Beach comes up next. This is situated in the southern part of Taiwan and it's a very popular tourist destination. The main highlight of Nanwan is the sandy beach, which offers a wide array of amenities for beachgoers. However, due to its popularity, Nanwan often becomes too overcrowded. This of course poses risks and challenges, particularly concerning the unregulated use of jet skis. They frequently zip along the shoreline in close proximity to swimmers. Of course, this is very dangerous. Another factor adding to the potential dangers at Nanwan is its location, which makes it susceptible to ocean ground swell 
generating seasonal typhoons. While this can create favorable surfing conditions for experienced individuals, it does pose significant risks to inexperienced beachgoers. So it's definitely crucial for visitors to exercise caution and prioritize their safety while enjoying the attractions of non one Coming up at number seven, we visit Imperial Beach. Imperial Beach of San Diego, California is known for its consistent and powerful waves. But just across the international border in Mexico lies a massive wastewater treatment plant responsible for handling all of the wastewater from the city of Tijuana. With a population now exceeding over 2 million people, Tijuana has experienced a significant growth since the 1950s. Unfortunately though, the wastewater treatment plant is operating well beyond its intended capacity, resulting in the regular discharge of vast amounts of untreated sewage and industrial pollutants into the Pacific Ocean. Compounded by prevailing ocean currents that flow from south to north, up to 140 million liters or 35 million gallons per day of toxic waste are carried across the international border and into Imperial Beach. Local officials diligently issue warnings advising against entering the water due to health risks. However, they have limited control over the influence on the discharge because, of course, it happens in another country, technically. Coming up at number six, we have New Smyrna Beach. New Smyrna Beach in Florida, on average, experiences around nine shark bites every single year. The frequent shark activity at New Smyrna Beach can be attributed to the migration patterns of juvenile fish along the Florida coast. So every single year, millions of these juvenile fish embark on a northward journey, creating a feeding frenzy among various predators, including seabirds and of course, sharks. Consequently, New Smyrna becomes a gathering spot for these predators, leading to an increased likelihood of encountering a shark. Boya Viajam Beach comes up next at number five. Nestled in the northeast part of Brazil, Boa Viajem Beach tragically has witnessed over 50 recorded shark attacks in the past two decades. In response to this alarming trend, the beach implemented strict regulations since the year 1999, prohibiting surfing and swimming in the waters exceeding one meter or 39 inches in depth. Now, the majority of recorded incidences at this beach have been attributed to aggressive species like bull and tiger sharks, both of which are known for their large size and assertive nature. As it stands, the primary approach to safeguarding beachgoers involves keeping them out of the water. As experts and authorities continue to seek viable solutions, beachgoers definitely have to stick to the established regulations and exercise a lot of caution. The beach in at the number four spot is Makua Beach. This beach is along the shoreline of Kauai, Hawaii, and it's also known as Tunnels Beach. In October 2013, a 13-year-old girl by the name of Bethany Hamilton had her life changed forever. As Bethany was maneuvering through the rolling waves, a colossus tiger shark measuring approximately four meters or 12 feet in length emerged. Now the shark seized Bethany, cleanly severing her left arm at the shoulder. Now in a fortunate turn of events, Bethany's quick thinking friends, they sprang into action and helped to rescue her. Bethany's inspiring journey became the subject of a book and film capturing the hearts of countless individuals worldwide. And it just shows the real danger that people face at this beach. Number three leads us to Esperance. In Western Australia, the town of Esperance has been confronted with a series of devastating shark attacks. In all cases, the attacks have been attributed to great white sharks that inhabit the area. In response to these heartbreaking events, a chorus of voices within the community has called for measures to mitigate the risk of shark attacks. The community is very eager to find a solution that balances the need for safety with the preservation of the ocean's ecosystem. But in the meantime, the residents of Esperance, they must grapple with the risks. They got to deal with it and hopefully a solution 
can come out of this. Coming down to the number two spot, we have Trois Bassin. The French island of Réunion, located in the Indian Ocean, has been grappling with a concerning surge in shark activity since the year 2011. Tragically, there have been 19 shark incidences, and the impact of these incidences has devastated the island's tourism industry. Surfing anywhere on the island has become just too dangerous. The rise has been attributed to a higher presence of aggressive bull and tiger sharks that are in the area. And despite various theories attempting to shed light on the surge in shark numbers and activities since the year 2011, such as the establishment of a no-take zone on the west coast, but none have been scientifically proven with a high degree of certainty. Ending this episode off at number one, we have Okuma. Prior to 2011, the beach in front of the Okuma Japan nuclear plant was vibrant and a very popular destination for surfers, fishermen, as well as beachgoers. However, everything changed on March 11th, 2011 when an immense offshore earthquake struck the region, registering at a magnitude of nine on the Richter scale. So from there, this triggered a series of powerful tsunami waves. And unfortunately, the tsunami waves reached the Tokyo Electric Power Company nuclear power station. And despite the protective concrete wall around the reactors, one wave estimated to be over 15 meters or 50 feet in height, it just couldn't be stopped. And as a result, a partial meltdown of the reactor cores occurred, leading to the release of radioactivity into the atmosphere. Now, over a decade later, the surrounding area still remains an exclusion zone. Number 10 leads us to Trift Bridge. The Trift Bridge in Switzerland is an architectural wonder that's built to be incredibly secure. So there's no need to worry about your safety, right? This suspension bridge is specifically designed for pedestrians to cross over the Swiss Alps spanning 560 feet above Lake Trifsi near the Trift Glacier. For those who are afraid of heights, this attraction may already be a source of terror and reaching the bridge can be just as challenging. It requires a journey in a cable car followed by a gondola ride and a strenuous hike uphill for an hour and a half to reach the base of the bridge. From there, we move on to number nine, looking at the Alnwick Garden. So guys, telling you, don't be fooled by the seemingly innocent name of this garden. It's definitely not your typical garden, so I'll explain. The Duchess of Northumberland, Jane Percy, had a grand plan when she decided to create this garden to bring together some of the rarest and most dangerous plants in the world. While visitors are kept at a safe distance from the toxic plants, anyone daring enough to sneak into the poison garden would be making a grave mistake. Surprisingly, also, the garden's website promotes it as a peaceful and tranquil space where families and children can enjoy themselves. Huh? But yeah, okay. Either way, the Poison Garden is the most popular attraction among the many gardens in Alnwick, and visitors are separated from nearly a hundred toxic plants by ominous looking black iron gates that only tour guides are authorized to open. And as expected, visitors are strictly forbidden from touching or ingesting any of the deadly plants. But despite this though, some visitors have reportedly fainted from inhaling toxic fumes while taking a stroll through the garden. The next tourist attraction is Volcanoes National Park. At Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park, the boldest and most daring tourists embark on an adventure like no other riding bicycles down the slopes of an active volcano. However, this exhilarating attraction has not been without its dangers though. There have been multiple accidental losses of life over the years, prompting temporary closures. And it's important to remember that these volcanoes, they're active. So an eruption can occur anytime, unexpectedly, 
resulting in, of course, very serious injuries or even fatalities. Kilauea and Moana Loa are perhaps the most well-known active volcanoes on Hawaii's Big Island, and the Chain of Craters Road offers a very unique opportunity to drive over actual lava flows in the park. It's almost as if you stepped onto a movie set rather than a tourist attraction though. I don't know if I have the stomach to travel on an active volcano. Moving on to number seven, we have Christmas Island. If you're looking for an amazing Australian vacation spot that offers excitement and adventure, well, here we have Christmas Island, home to a plethora of wildlife species, including the notorious coconut crab. While that may sound cute and tropical and all, definitely don't be fooled. These crabs, they can grow up to a size of three feet long and sneak up on you. They climb trees, they just pop out of nowhere. It's definitely more reminiscent of a horror movie scene than a Christmas paradise, but either way, that's another story. There are plenty of other safe and enjoyable activities for tourists to experience on Christmas Island. One of the main attractions is witnessing the annual migration of the crabs as they travel to the coast. Over 40 million crabs used to call the island home, so it's definitely a sight to see. Number six leads us to the Valley of Death. Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula boasts its own version of the Valley of Death. And this is at the Valley of Geysers, and it's arguably even more dangerous than the American counterpart. While Death Valley is infamous for its extreme temperatures, the danger at the Valley of Geysers lies in the toxic gas that's released by the nearby volcano. This deadly gas has actually wiped out all of the plants and animal life in the valley, and humans experience adverse symptoms upon entering the area. The Valley of Death is a mile-long area located at the foot of the stratovolcano Kikpinich, and the volcanic gases permeate the valley, creating a deadly trap that kills anything that enters. In the late 1900s, researchers determined that the toxic gas is a deadly mixture of hydrogen sulfide, carbon and sulfur dioxide, and carbon disulfide. Number five leads us to the El Caminito del Rey. This is an unnerving walkway that's constructed on the edge of a mountain, which has claimed numerous lives, leading to its closure to the public. However, that didn't stop some adventurous people from sneaking onto the path. Following extensive renovations to restore the crumbling concrete and rusty metal supports, the path reopened back in the year 2015. It's been dubbed the King's Little Path, and it's hard to actually fathom using this pathway for any type of transportation at all. It seems safer to just go through a forest than this rickety path hovering 330 feet above the river below. And due to five lives being lost between the years 1999 and 2000, the route gained the dubious distinction of being the world's most dangerous walkway. The dangerous tourist attraction coming in at number four is a Middlemore Water Park. It's hard to imagine why anyone thought that a water park trebuchet was a good idea, and yet it actually exists. The ride involved being launched from a giant catapult at breakneck speeds for the low price of $60. And the so-called safety net wasn't actually foolproof at all, and riders often suffered injuries ranging from mild concussions to broken bones. Shockingly, the ride remained operational until the year 2022 when tragedy struck. What happened was a rider missed the net and lost their life. And people are wondering what possessed park management to continue operating such a dangerous ride for so long in the first place. Coming in at the number three spot, we have the Cliffs of Moher. The Cliffs of Moher are undoubtedly one of Ireland's most breathtaking natural wonders, and the panoramic views of the Irish countryside and the Atlantic Ocean are to die for. 
However, the cliff's rugged and treacherous terrain has claimed many lives, making it a popular location for attempts to end one's own life, unfortunately. The cliffs reach an average height of 390 feet with some parts extending to over 700 feet, making a fall from the top, yeah, a certain end to life. Making a fall from the top a certain end of life. Despite the cliff's unfortunate reputation, they remain one of Ireland's most popular tourist attractions, drawing over 1.5 million visitors annually. Coming up next in the number two spot, we have the Festival of San Fermin. Pamplona, Spain has been a charming and peaceful destination most of the year, but it becomes a hub of adrenaline and chaos during the annual San Fermin Festival. The running of the bulls, as they call it, is the main event. And this event draws thousands of tourists who want to witness the spectacle of bulls charging through the city streets. However, the festival is not for the faint of heart. Every year, dozens of participants are injured and actually lose their lives because of the raging bulls. Goring is a common injury and the bull's horns are capable of inflicting serious damage, obviously. So if you're going and looking for a very relaxing vacation, it's definitely best to avoid Pamplona during the festival that happens from July 6th to July 14th. Ending this episode off at number one, Action Park. Action Park opened its doors in Vermin Township, New Jersey in 1978, and it was a trailblazer for water parks in America. But unfortunately, it was also a pioneer in dangerous and potential lethal amusement park rides. With wave pools that could generate 40 feet waves and water slides with loops, it's no surprise that Action Park became infamous for its high number of injuries and loss of life during its 18 year run. Thankfully, the park finally closed down for good in 1996 and this spared future generations from potential harm. 